You know that feeling when you have an author you absolutely love? And then you read a book by that author and it's like, what the heck? This just ain't that great. Well, that's coming up here on Drew's Book Reviews. Good day, good day, good day, and welcome to another episode of Drew's Book Reviews. So it turns out Brandon Sanderson actually had a fifth secret project. We thought there was only four, but it turns out there was another book that he was sending to all of his Kickstarter backers for the year of the Sanderson secret project, which I didn't expect. As far as I know, none of the backers expected it either. So we're going to talk about that book today. And of course, don't forget to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. Uh, links to all my socials down in the down in the description below of course so today we're going to be talking about long chills and Kesto. this is a sanderson short story uh and sanderson is known to be a pretty prolific popular writer and generally his books have been just fantastic it's hard to find a bad sanderson book in my humble opinion it's one of the reasons why i'm such a big brandon sanderson fan so when this came out, I was thinking, cool, a short story by Brandon Sanderson. It's kind of got that uh, futuristic detective look to it. And it certainly is a story set in the future, the year 2151 to be exact, uh, with a primary character by the name of Darren, who is a private investigator. Now, that this book is an interesting setting. I'll give it that. I kind of like the vibe, but it's uh, very, very much that uh, mob, mobster 1920 Chicago detective type vibe going on in this book which is absolutely what i think was sanderson's objective for this story is to kind of set that setting and have that character vibe and that setting with that but it's set in future 2151 to be more precise uh and uh we have this detective who is hired out on a case to try and prove uh this, this individual innocent of the crimes they are accused of committing now of course because it has that classic trope 1920s mobster detective private eye story of course the client is this incredibly attractive woman who insists that she's innocent or being framed uh, or whatever the case may be so very much follows that classic trope for that type of story uh reading it, it kind of gave me the vibe and feeling of the like if you're a trekkie out there then you know the classic dixon hill who's the doll she's a the doll's my cousin uh Captain Picard's favorite holodeck program with Dixon Hill Private Investigator. Uh, kind of has that vibe to it. But along with that vibe and the setting, um, you know, I think it was in that sense, it was a fun, quirky little story. But honestly, that's kind of where the fun and quirkiness end for me. Uh, I, I just found that things just, it, the types of things and the ideas and the attitudes, I guess, of the main character just they don't age well in modern society to be honest uh, along with that kind of feel and vibe of that 1920 chicago in 2151 kind of idea is the chauvinistic misogynistic and sexist ideology and attitude of our main character darren's often referring to his secretary as skirt and doll and that kind of thing at one point he even refers to her as uh saying seeming surprised even that she's not just a good looking skirt or doll, but she actually has brains and she's smart too. Uh, so very much there's that misogynistic and sexist characterization behind this character. Now, at the four books, four literature of any kind, I never personally have an issue with a character with those traits, but I have, I don't like when it's portrayed like it's not a big deal. Uh, or it doesn't seem to fit well with the story, I guess. It's hard to explain because while it does have that vibe to it, it's also in the year 2151. Uh, so there's nothing in this futuristic world that really suggests that this is even a common cultural ideology at that time. And it's just exclusively with this character. And so it doesn't seem to fit that well uh, within what the story's trying to accomplish. Now, I guess I, I get why Sanderson um wrote it the way that he did um because he really wanted to kind of get that feel but the problem is it just comes across too much as a chauvinistic sexist type of feel to the character with nothing to indicate that there's any issue with this 
um, he's our main character Darren is only called out once on this, and it's almost like it was just kind of thrown in there so that it doesn't seem all bad or something like that. I don't know. I I don't know if that was uh, what Sanderson was trying to do with that one line that called this our character out, but it it just I don't like that in the story because it feels very much like it didn't need to be there, and it would just would have just been a better story uh, with that. Uh, and like I said, with these types of characters, I don't mind that kind of mentality in a character or even a culture in a world if it's written into the story and functions well within that story. But it just didn't feel like it needed to be there. And it's so rare that I'll have a bad review of a Sanderson book. Uh, so, you know, for anybody out there that thinks I love Sanderson so much that I won't give him a bad review, well, here you go. Here's a bad review of a Sanderson book right here. Like, this is it. And just, it wasn't a great read uh, i'm kind of glad it's kind of a good thing actually that it maybe wasn't published traditionally and was given to the backers of the kickstarter uh and, or distributed or published in the way that it was because i just don't think that this would have worked well in the modern era uh and believe me there are a lot of books out there that have terrible characters who think and act this way uh and they're done well like even robin hobb has got some of that in and his and her books uh, with some of the characters, uh, Kyle, for example, uh, which let's not even talk about Kyle. That's a whole different series. So the point is, you can have these kind of characters without it feel feeling like it's pointless to have that character where it fits well with the story. I just don't think that happened here. Anyway, I've been ranting on this for a little bit now, but I just wanted to share some of my thoughts on Long Chills and K Stowe. Um, you know, great idea for a story. Love the setting. Characterization. That's really the biggest drawback of this book. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Long Chills and Kaisto. If you're a backer of The Secret Project and have read this, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. If you're a backer of The Secret Projects and haven't read it, you don't. No loss if you don't. At least in my humble opinion. Anyway... Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, keep on reading. Bye!